الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد I thought it would be relevant and very important to talk about the importance of Aqidah the importance of correct and sound creed or belief and what better way to discuss than, uh, this a very important issue than to discuss the speech of the scholars of Islam and just today I purchased a very important book called Sharh al uh, Sharh Matum al Aqidah. It's an explanation of several different books in Creed, and it's by Sheikh Dr. Said uh, Asad Ibn Nasser Ibn Abdulaziz Abu Habib Ashitri, who is one of the major scholars and here in Saudi Arabia. And Sheikh Dr. Shetri Hafidullah Ta'ala mentioned some very important things when it is concerned with the uh, the creed of the Muslim and the belief of the Muslim and the study of the Muslim. What is, should a Muslim concern his or herself with? So the Shaykh said, أَوْلًا أَنَّ الْأَسَاسَ هَذِهِ الْمِلَّةِ هُوَ الْإِتِقَادِ He said the first thing is that the foundation of this religion is belief, is creed. فَلَوْ وَجِدَ مَنْ مَنَ التَّلْزِمْ مَنْ من التلزم بأحكام الفروع هذه الشرعية لكنه لم يلتزم بعقيدتها لم ينفعه ذلك عند الله جل وعلا So he said So for example if you find that a person is very strict in adhering to the rulings of this religion related to the فروع meaning not the asul of the religion or the foundation of the religion but related to things that have to do with uh, maybe the, the mu'amalat and the things that we do which is other than the foundation of religion meaning creed, uh, salat and things like this so if a person for example they make or give excessive importance to learning the Arabic language meaning going beyond the, the level of needing it for ibad and needing it to understand the religion but they go deep into the Arabic language or they go deep into Masail al-Fiqh you know many different issues in Fiqh they go really deep into it but yet they do not give importance to Aqidah then that will not benefit him why because the, the Aqidah is your assass and that is that will not benefit you with your Lord the Almighty ومن هنا كانت أسئلة على العبد يوم القيامة and he said and from here meaning the creed is where the slave will be asked and held accountable on the day of judgment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala والأسئلة على العبد في القبر متعلقة بمعتقده <coughs> and that the questions in the grave uh, the slave will be questioned in the grave they are related to his creed to his belief his or her belief. Men Rabbuk Wuma Dilak Wuman Nabiak. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is your prophet? Those are the asul of the religion. That is related to your creed and your belief. That is one of the most important matters. Thanian, the second thing the Shaykh mentioned. He said the second thing is that the questions which are relevant to one's success on the day of judgment are related to the issues of Aqidah, the issues of creed. The third thing, a thalith, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam labath vi Mecca ashira sinin la yid'u illa illa tawheed that the Prophet ﷺ, this is the third thing, he stayed in Mecca 13 years, uh, I'm sorry, 10 years, and he only called to Tawheed. He didn't call to Hajj, he didn't call to Umrah, he didn't call to Jihad, he didn't call to the other aspects of the religion, because those ahkam were not yet uh, uh, prescribed on the believers. 
So the Prophet ﷺ stayed in Mecca 10 years and only called to Tawheed. That shows you Tawheed is uh, of great importance. You know, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, and how to worship Him properly, His Lordship, and knowing His divine names and attributes, and know that they are only restricted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِي شَيْفُ وَسَمِيُّ بصير That there is none like, uh, none uh, similar to Him. And He is the all-hearing, all-seeing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Himself that nothing is comparable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that He is all-hearing and all-seeing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does possess hearing and sight. But it is unlike our sight. Our sight, we are imperfect creatures. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect in His names and attributes. Then the Shaykh went on to say, وَلَمْ يُخَاتِبْ بِالصَّلَاةِ إِلَّا قَبْلَ الْحِجْرَةِ بِثَلَاثَ سَنَوَاتِ And that the people were not required to make prayer until, uh, uh, except uh, uh, before the hijrah for uh, three years, بِثَلَاثَ سَنَوَاتِ وَمَا ذَاكَ إِلَّا لِأَنَّ تَوْحِيدُ هُوَ أَسَاسِ أَلَّذِي يَنْطَلَكْ مِنْهُ الْخَلْقِ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ So he said, and, and with regards to this, this is because that Tawheed, the Islamic monotheism, it is the foundation which uh, the, crea the creation is here for, and that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُوا الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear for us that the purpose that we were created, he said, I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Then that is our divine purpose. That is our purpose, is to fulfill the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. Then the Shaykh mentioned the fourth thing. He said, Rabian, ارتكاز دعوة الأنبياء عليهم سلام على هذا أساس وانطلاقهم من التوحيد فكل نبي يقول لقومه إن نعبد الله ألا تعبد الله ألا تعبد إلا الله قال تعالى ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا إن نعبد الله واجتنب تعبود. then the sheikh mentioned the fourth thing. He said that the the uh, prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, that they were concerned with their main purpose, which was to uh, to propagate that foundation, and that and, and which is tawheed, in the meaning the worship of Allah subhanahu wa taala alone. And every prophet said to their people, Worship Allah. And do not associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do not worship anyone except Allah. Anyone or anything. And then the Shaykh mentioned the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qala ta'ala, We have sent to every nation a messenger. To worship Allah alone and to be away from the Taghut, meaning those things worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the purpose. This is the purpose of creation. This is what the the uh, the prophets, alayhim after salatu wa salam, they were all set with this. This is what uh, we're going to be asked about in the grave, is Tawheed, in our creed, what we believed. This is, these are not just the questions of the grave, but this is what is important, the most important thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the first thing we'll be asked about on the Day of Judgment. That is what the Shaykh is um, conveying to us. And it is an emphasis, and he's emphasizing the importance that creed comes first, tawheed comes first. In all of our da'wah, it's tawheed. And I'll end this with a story, uh, or a true event I've heard on countless, countless oca uh, occasions here, where I am presently staying, I know an individual who is a pure Sufi. He says, I'm a Sufi. And not only that, he is an individual who's very studious. He's, you will never find this man except that he has a book in his hand. 
And you always hear this man talk about what? He talks about the Arabic language. We got to study. He says, Darasa, Darasa, Darasa. We have to study. We have to memorize. You've, I've never, I can never, I can honestly say I've never heard him mentioning Aqidah or Tawheed, the worship of Allah alone, but he's always talking about issues of fiqh, issues of the madhab, such and such, issues of, uh, of um, what are the shurut of uh, wudu, what is this, what is that. Those are incredibly important issues. However, Tawheed first. So it isn't that we spend our time learning Arabic poetry, poetry, Arabic grammar, uh, just uh, learning the balagha in the language, or that we spend our time learning fiqh or other uh, aspects of the religion at the expense of learning correct tawheed. Abadan. This has never been what the, the, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alayhim <clears> atta salatu wa salam, this is not what they were sent with, and this is never what they have propagated. They propagated pure Tawheed, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا إِنْ نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا تَقُولُ And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah and stay away from uh, those things worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the ghaya. That is the purpose. That is what we are trying to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنُ وَلَا إِنْتَ لَلَيْ عَبُدُونَ As we just mentioned. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created mankind and jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Nam, salat, zakat, uh, marriage, selling, and, and doing halal transactions. All of these are aspects of the religion. And they all have incredible importance. But not at the expense of your creed and your belief. You have to know who Allah is. How to worship Him properly. And you have to know who His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last Prophet and Messenger, Alayhi salatu was. You have to know about him. How can you follow a sunnah if you don't know who he is? This is what we are ordered to do. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of Ahl Tawheed. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.